it said the program should ask the user to well first of all it said demonstrate the class by writing a separate program that creates an instance of the class so let's go ahead and create an instance of the class to create an instance of the class you start with the name of the class which is test scores and then the name of the object you're trying to create from it so i'm going to call it um You, you, now, now this is going to represent scores of a, of a student, right, or for someone. So you can even say um, test scores one or something like that. Or you can you can even use a, a person to represent it. So I can, I'm going to say K for me, all right, for me. So test scores K, right. Now this is similar to writing or, or declaring a variable like say int call int number. Int is the type and number is the name of the variable. You can think of this test scores actually as it's actually it's it is it is the type right when you try when java sees this it's going to say okay you're trying to create a variable some kind of variable but it's going to realize that test scores is not one of the primitive data types it's not it's not an int it's not a double it's not a character so it's going to know that you're trying to create a class type variable right so it's going to reserve this variable to hold the memory address of an object or yeah to hold or to reference an object now I haven't created an object yet. This is just a variable to hold it, to, to hold the memory address of it. So now I'm going to create a memory, so a new object in memory by saying new test scores here like this. Once I do this, I have, I, I create an object in memory, right? And then this equal sign assigns the memory address of the object I have created in memory to K. So now K is going to refer to that object. It's going to re reference that object. Okay, it's going to be a class type variable that's going to reference that object, or a reference variable that's going to reference that object. All right. Now, because they're in the same folder, it was able to know what test course is. So we went to test course class. We went to the test course class in the same folder to look at how to initialize the fields using the constructor. So the constructor accepts no argument, so I don't have to pass in any argument. It sets the score one score two and score three of k initially to zero 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 all right so now i've created an object here so compile it and we see everything is fine nope not fine yet <laughs> i thought it was going to be fine we missed the s here we can see that the name of the class is test scores and i said test scores so i'm going to type in s let's see the error says cannot find symbol test score yeah it's supposed to be test scores okay so compile this oops compile this and then it works fine let's look at the instructions it said once we're done creating an instance of class, it said, the program should ask the user to enter three test scores, which are stored in the test scores object. All right, so now we know that K has initial initial scores of score one, zero, score two, zero, score three, zero, right? So the program should ask the user to enter three test scores, which are, uh, which are stored in the test scores object. All right, so let's go ahead and, and use, or basically ask the user to type in, type in three, three test scores. Now, we can go ahead and type in three separate, you know, print statements and ask the user that. Or we can use a loop to do that, right? It makes it simple. We know we are asking the user three times, so we can create a loop that iterates three times and ask the user um, something, right? Uh, now, let's see something. I want to see. Um, let's see. All right, so you know although we can do that you know we can do that but it, you know it may be you know i don't want to complicate it right we can do it because i'm thinking of these variable names and um, actually the field names score one score two score three um, we can we can definitely work or do it but let's just keep it simple and then write three separate statements to do that right but we can d definitely use a loop to handle it okay so let's ask you to enter the, the score for um for the basically the scores for this this object k. Um, for the previous program, I used a, I used a uh, G option pane, so I'm going to use a scanner for this one. So import, I'm going to go ahead and import. To use the scanner class, we have to go ahead and import it so that this program can have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and import the scanner class, which is located in the java.util package. Util package, okay, scanner. So I've imported the scanner class, which is located in the java.util package. And once I, um, it's funny because now we're going to do something similar with creating objects in classes. Um, once I have the scanner, I'm going to go ahead and create a scanner object so I can use it to accept input from the user, right? So to create a scanner object, it's going to be scanner. 
I'm going to call this object scanner, which is going to be I'm creating a new scanner object in memory and passing in the system dot in method, which is basically going to accept byte info from the keyboard. Okay, and then I'm going to connect this object to this the scanner. I'm going to basically connect it to the scanner, the memory address to this. I'll basically connect it to the scanner, the scanner var um, class type variable. Class type variable. <laughs> okay, so now I can use this scanner object here to accept input from the user. Now this is the test course object K. All right, so let's ask the user using a system that out print statements to system dot out. Oops. Let's print our statements to ask the user for the first course and say, please enter score one. Keep it simple. Once we ask the user for that, we need a place to, well, first of all, let's go ahead and, this is just to display it to the user, right? So let's give the user some kind of um, way to, to type in something, right? So we're going to use a scanner object we just created up here. So scanner dot, and I'm going to call that dot next um, double method which is basically going to it's going to um, so scanner dot next double is going to pop up some kind of text box allow the user to type in the score whatever the user has typed is going to be converted to a double right and it's going to be returned once it's returned we need a place to store it so I'm going to go ahead and create a variable call let's say it's going to be a double right so double which is going to because that variable is going to store a score and the score is a double okay it can be 50 point something you know it can be it can be a decimal so I'm defining the score as a double, and I'm going to call it score one. So once the score, has, score one has been typed by the user, it's going to be converted to a double, and it's going to be score, stored in the score one double variable. So I'm going to basically um, copy this twice. Please enter the score two. Please enter score two. Score two, which I haven't declared yet. I'm going to go ahead and declare it now. So double score two, scanner the next double, convert it to a double and store it here. Still using the same scanner object. And then over here, please enter score three. Score three variable, which I haven't declared yet, but I have it copied so I can just do this. And then, all right, so score three is going to be called scanner the next double. All right, so now we'll have all these, the scores in score one, score two, score three. We have so we have those we have the values stored in them, right? So, so I can go ahead and since I have the values stored in them, I can go ahead and use the mutators. Okay, the mutators of this class set score sets so set score one, set score two, and set score three to set the scores of this particular k object, right? So I'm going to do that. So k k dot set score one, and I'm going to set it to score one over here which the, which the user has to have. I can define this as user score one just so it's it's it, you know it makes sense user score two and then oops user score three and then I have to basically change these names also so user score one user score two and then user score three so k dot set score one to user score one. Okay, that's going to be the user score one over here. And then again, I'm I'm sorry. I was in a I was in the public. Um, I was I was in my actually my school library. So they were, they, were, they, were, they were making an announcement. So sorry about that. All right. So now we've set the score score one of k. So I'm going to set the score of oops. Th this this score two of k. So set k dot set score two to be equal to what has been what's stored in the user score two variable, and then the next one is going to be just the score three of k. So k dot set score three to the value user score three that a user has typed here. So now we've set the scores. Now we can actually just go ahead and say, and call the the calculate average 
which is going to basically going to use the values of that particular object which has been set already it's going to return the average right so I can just basically call k dot calculate average and we know calculate average is not accepting any arguments so yeah it's just returning the average of the three scores of that particular k object it's returning it's not being printed so we can use system um, system yeah system that out well, actually let's use system that out print f rather so that we can format the value system dot out dot print f so we can format the value of this now system out print f uh, first of all takes in a couple um, two arguments okay first of all how you want it formatted here and then what is being formatted it's going to replace any placeholder that's in this string if you have multiple arguments here these multiple arguments are going to replace any placeholder in these strings respectively okay so how this is how I want to display it I'm going to say the average well since we don't have the name of this particular we only have the score so we're going to say the average of the, the th um, we can even you we can we can actually even oops I'm supposed to click this let me just go ahead and quit it <laughs> it came back oh boy no, let me just click this okay so the average of let's see okay so the average of so I'm going to create a placeholder here and I'm going it's going to be a score so I'm going to say percentage F now percentage F is a placeholder that's placeholder right basically a value is going to replace this and that value is a float and that's why I type in I typed F okay this percentage F means it's a placeholder okay it's a float is going to be replacing this value and the values of the argument you pass in here as a second set of arguments or argument um, for this system that other printf statements are going to replace the placeholders in this first argument which is a string respectively all right so the the average of percentage f okay comma percentage f comma percent and n percentage f so basically these three values uh, sorry these three placeholders values are going to replace them and those values are going to be the, the three th the three scores the three in indi the three individual scores so it's going to be the average of score one score two and score three all right and i'm going to say is percentage f and that's going to be the average so these are placeholders right f because those values are all going to be to be floats right so like i said the arguments you pass here are going to replace these values right respectively so the first argument I, I pass here is going to replace this the second argument I pass here is going to be placed here the third argument I pass here is going to replace this and then this respectively so the first argument which is going to be score one the average of the uh, let me just do this the average of yeah so this is going to be a number right this is going to be score one so let's score one is to get score one of k I can use the accessor okay for score one over here which is get score one okay get score one it's, it's the, the, the score one is going to be returned okay so k dot get score one here is going to return that and that's going to replace it's going to replace this placeholder respectively the second argument is going to be k dot get score two which is going to replace this value the third argument is going to be k dot get score or well, actually change it to two and three two here and three k k dot get score three is going to replace this and then the last argument which is percentage f is going to be k dot uh, that's going to be the average and the average we know the, the method to calculate that is is um calculate average so k dot calculate average is going to have the calculate uh, the average return which is going to replace this last percentage f right so these values are rep replacing these placeholders respectively so k dot calculate average now i'll break this in a second break it somewhere here 
Okay, we haven't formatted it really yet, but we will if the, if the numbers are too large. All right, so basically we're we're done. Um, we have asked the user for the values. We have set the we've well, we've, we've created an object, test scores object. We have set the scores of this particular object k, and then we are displaying the results of all the test scores and the average. So we are using k dot get score one to get the scores, and then k dot calculate average to calculate the average based on the scores that are set for k. So now let's go ahead and compile this and see if we have any errors, and we do. All right, so cannot find symbol method get score two. How did I name it in the class? I named it as get score. <laughs> I named it as get score one two, so it doesn't know what it is. It's supposed to be get score two. So I'm going to save this, possibly perhaps compile it, and um, now it should work. Now it should know what get score two is. So when I compile this, when I compile this, okay, it's fine. I thought it was for the other program. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this. And it says, please enter score one. I'm going to enter 20. Please enter score two. I'm going to enter 20. Enter score three. I'm going to enter 20. So it's going to be 60 divided uh, by three, right? So, and, and that should give you 20. Now we haven't formatted these values. That's why it's like this, right? Okay, so we can we can try it. We can go ahead and try it again. Try different values. Let's try 50, 50 for square two and 50 for square three. That's 150 divided by three, which is 50, right? Let's go ahead and format it. So the formatting I wanted first of all formatted it to two the small places. So I'm going to set specify the position in between the percentage and the F by typing let's say point two, which means formatted to two the small places. Point two. If I wanted it formatted to uh, formatted to th uh, to three decimal places, I'd say point three. I wanted it formatted to two decimal places, so I'd say point two. Um, yes, that's that's pretty much it. I wanted it formatted to formatted to, um, to two decimal places, so let me go ahead and copy this, and then replace all of these. Actually, let me do that. Actually, let me just type it. It's easier. All right. Palace and then run. Type in, let's say, 40, 40, 40. And the average of 40, I mean, point. I mean, two decimal places is fine. Is that. Let's try mix the values. So 100, 90, and 80. And it says the average of 190 and 80 is 90. Let's try all the values. 100. 60 and then 65 and the average of 160 and 65 is 75 so we can see that it's working okay it's working give the it the, yeah it, it's working it should work you know, these values should look correct if they're not just change the math um, over here but this is how to calculate the average this is this is how to calculate cal calculate the average so so that's so that's fine we can see it's working so yeah we see we can, we are using accesses in the class to access to get the fields of these class. We are using the, the method calculate average, okay. Um, here to um cal here to cal to calculate the average of this particular object. So we ask we are getting the we are accessing the the fields using accesses or the getters. We are using the calculate average method. We are using the mutators or the setters to set the fields. We are using the constructor to create the object. And this program works, okay. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, bye-bye.